Hi guys, it's Mr. Daly again. I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to process the film. We've already done a demonstration on how to get your film out of the cassette, onto the reel, and into a tank, like so. Once you've done that, and if you're unsure, rewatch that uh, demonstration video, and then we'll, it'll bring us up to this point. Uh, this is how just, uh, I don't know if I covered it before, but if you have store-bought film, you can use this to open the cap off, okay? The cassettes that we have, they pop off very easily, either by hand, or just cracking it like an egg and popping that off. And I do believe that was all in that other demonstration video. So we're going to move on. So you come out of the dark room. Oh, you may also use film bags, which I know I talked about in class. And those are located here if you do not want to work in the dark room and or uh, you're the only one developing that day and we don't want to hold the dark room up for just one student, you can use the black bag. Uh, but it's totally your preference. Some kids prefer these. Uh, most do not. All right, we exit the dark room, and this is a light tight tank. At this point, you'll wait for me, and uh, uh, I will come out and, and tell you which station to go to. So always check with me before you begin. So the first question I'll usually ask is, how many do you have? That means how many rolls of film, one or two. So you'll say two, and then I look at the tally mark, which was behind the camera. I'll mark it, and then I'm going to give you two times. So let's say I say, go to station B, and your times are five and three. That means five minutes with developer, three minutes with fixer, because stop bath is always 30 seconds. All right. So at that point, remove the cap. You do not need a funnel to pour chemicals into this tank. The lid itself is its own funnel. I like to count the time, one, two, three, four, five, because sometimes it's hard to tell if that's five or six, and the minutes are clicks, and the second pan slides freely. All right, at this point, we're ready. We're gonna pour, oh, before you start, make sure that the bottles are in order. Green, red, yellow. On the back wall, I'm not sure if you can see it in this frame, is a poster telling you the, uh, these, the steps and in the order which they go. So, green. I always check to make sure I have 20 ounces. If you give it a little shake, it'll move, and then you can see the liquid, the developer line drop. Okay. You carefully pour in the entire contents of the bottle. Start the timer. About every 30 seconds, you're going to agitate. Okay. At this point, uh, because of COVID, if you are with a partner, you guys need to separate every few minutes just so we're staying within that CDC 15-minute uh, time limit. All right. So you don't have to keep an eye on the clock and agitate every 30 seconds, just randomly about every 30 seconds as you're talking to each other. Okay. Let's say time flies and we are done. Okay. I leave the alarm on loud enough to hear it so that I don't look over and realize, oh, crap, I'm, it's time's up. But it doesn't need to be super loud. Okay, so at that point, I need the funnel to pour the contents back into the bottle. If there's a fire alarm when you have developer in, you will keep track of your time, grab the empty bottle with a funnel and your stop bath. And when you get outside, you can pour the contents into the developer bottle there and then get the stop bath in. Remember, it is still wet with developer. It's still actively developing. So you need to get the stop bath in pretty quick. Pour the entire contents of the bottle in in 30 seconds. That I usually just kind of, you can't overstop it. So if you go a little bit longer, that's not a big deal. While you're waiting, I would rinse in this sink here your funnel. Do not rinse anything in that sink except for rinsing film. 30 seconds goes up. and pour the entire contents back into the bottle. Fire alarm happens at this point. You're fine. Stop. Can't hurt it. Okay. Now, pour the fixer in. I said five and three. So we pour the entire contents of the fixer into the bottle. One, two, three. Start it. While that's fixing, I can rinse this funnel and cap that because people accidentally pour the next chemical into the previous bottle because they leave the funnel in it. So don't do that. Time flies, pour the fixer back in. 
if there was a fire alarm and the fixer was in, this doesn't happen too often, but if it does, grab the empty fixer bottle, grab another tank off the wall and fill it with cold water. You can then outside pour the fixer back in and pour some cold water into the tank. At this point, we're done developing. Put the bottles back in order. Green, red, yellow. A quick rinse of your funnel. Funnel to the left. You can now unscrew your lid and pull your film out. Okay, I don't have film in here because I didn't want to mess with the chemical. Uh, at that point, I typically will check to make sure that my film fixed. We'll talk about that in class. Your film should be clear. Uh, it shouldn't have any cloudiness to it. Typically, it looks kind of like milky lavender or kind of tan. Make sure it's clear. If it's clear, then it is fixed fully. If it has that cloudiness to it, pour the fixer back in. Don't need the lid at this point because we've already exposed it to light uh, and make sure it's fully fixed. We're coming down here. In this tray, we will fill it with cold water. Pull your film out. Lay it where you'll remember where it is and give it a 10 minute rinse. At this point, I'm just leaving that off because it's loud. You can rinse all this stuff and put it back on the wall, okay? Once the film is fixed or rinsed for 10 minutes, you'll pull the film back out, put it in a clean tank. Don't need the stem, but you can use the stem as like a handle to grab stuff. Fill it with cold water. This I don't mind if you fill here. This is everything's clean. And then you're going to take two drops, the eye droppers on two of the timers. Put three drops, I'm sorry, three drops in per roll of film. And then you just swish that around for about a minute. It'll suds up a little bit. Try not to make a mess as I just did. You can dump that down the sink. At this point, you would squeegee your film. Squeegeeing the film, there are squeegees in this drawer, and there are squeegees at the far drawer. You will need a partner to squeegee. One person holds the film in the air, the other person is going to take, I always rinse these and rub my fingers down the, the rubber to make sure that I've got all the grime off of it. As they're holding the film, I go point to edge and slide down, and then I go the other point to edge, slide down, then we rotate the film and do that again. So I'm squeegeeing four times. That's just what I do. I want to get as much water off as possible so I don't have water spots on my film. At that point, follow me, if you can, to the dryer. Yeah. Here's the dryer. You can slide these out to get your film in and out. And then be careful. You can see this is already caught up. So I want to be respectful of somebody else's film, uh, even though the film that happens to be hanging is no good. Uh, we slide those out. This is a little bit. I'm going to straighten that out. Uh, you put a clip at the top and a clothespin at the bottom. The clothespins will not hold film at the top. The clothespins just act as a weight to keep the film from touching and curling around each other and ruining each other. Once you have them hung up, slide that back in, close the door, turn on the, uh, the dryer. It should take about 10 minutes. The way I check to see if film is dry is film will curl to the emulsion side, which is the dull side of the film. Uh, but another way you can check it is arm hair. If it slides on your arm hair, it is dry. If you feel it pulling on your arm hair at all, there is still moisture on that. So just leave it in there to dry. And then at that point, your film is ready to be cut and put in a negative sleeve, and that will be another demonstration video. So that's it. Thank you.